Okay, so flight simulators are a really good way to learn to fly FPV without losing your gear uh, or without even buying gear. You can crash as much as you want. Um, I'm going to look at the three most popular ones that I see recommended the most at least. At the end of the video I will break down which one I think you should buy given what your use case would be. So stick around for that. Also consider subscribing because currently my channel name is this. So flight feel wise, all three of them do a very good job of matching beta flight's rates. So you can set your rate up and it will feel very, very similar and you to the point where I notice that it's wrong if it's wrong. Velocidrone and Liftoff feel quite similar flight feel wise, I think. They sort of feel a little bit heavy and like sort of roughly correct or they're cl are much closer than DRL is to real life, I think. DRL feels a lot floatier and you sort of f seem to have a lot, I don't really know how to explain it, but it's sort of really sort of floaty and flowy. It does feel nicer and smoother to move around just like driving around corners and stuff, but doing punch outs and flipping and stuff like that, it sort of feels too soft and floaty like it's um, on the moon or something. It's strange. Liftoff and Velocidrone have a similar number of maps and similar environments. However, Liftoff has the Duggar and Joshua Badwell's house, which is interesting to some, I guess. The scale of the maps is typically bigger in Velocidrone, but I think Liftoff's maps are generally better made. Velocidrone's maps at, in times can feel like sort of sparse and with just things thrown together, whereas it feels like all the maps had a bit more put into them in Liftoff. However, there are a few notable ones, like the Paris one, where there's really not much to them. Like they're very small and there's not much there, you can't really freestyle them. Finally, DRL has absolutely huge maps, at least a couple of them. There are smaller ones, but the main two maps that I tend to fly are the huge open ones uh, because they have mixed variety of environments and they're all connected together in a nice way and it just means you can load up the game and then just fly and not have to worry for a while. You can just, if you want to change your environment, fly to a somewhat different environment uh, and that's quite cool. I think if I just quickly mention graphics, I won't spend too much time on it because I don't think it's that important for a simulator, but I think Velocidrone looks by far the most functional and like, you know, it was clearly not a priority to make it visually the best. Uh, liftoff looks better and has a few like, you know, sort of fancy effects if you turn the graphics all the way up if you've got a decent PC. And the map size being quite small actually means it performs okay on lower end PCs as well. Uh, and then DRL looks really quite nice and it does look quite polished and at the end of the day it looks the best out of the three. So all three of them have a track editor mode where you can load in an existing map and then place objects and run a course through and create your own tracks basically. Velocidrones is really quite similar to game engines and game development software. So W, E and R are move, rotate and scale just the same as they are in Maya and Unity. And so it makes it quite easy to pick that up if you're used to that type of software for, that, for this type of task. The other two uh, DRLs is actually quite similar to Velocidrones, there's not really much in it, honestly. Um, it's slightly, it's more polished and it's got like better menus and sort of, which is a pretty much a theme for DRL is it seems very well polished. Um, but realistically it's very, very similar. Um, the buttons are slightly different so it's not as easy to convert over from game development software. But if you have never used game development software, that is literally a non-issue. And even if you have, it's only like switching between two different packages and learning it again. It's not, it's not a huge deal. Liftoff on the other hand is completely different than the other two. There's a mode where you first person and walk around but only when you hold the right click and then you can jump. I don't know why. <laughs> um, and then there's a top down camera view that lets you pan the camera around and put place things but none of them are as useful as the like free floating mode that um, the other two use. And then it's sort of awkward to get the selection of assets out where you want them and um, placing things and it, in first person is awkward and just it generally is just a lot more awkward to use than the other two which is a theme for liftoff really is it's slightly more awkward to use but in general um, you could make tracks with it uh, just don't think you'd find it as easy as you would with Velocitron or Lift or, uh, DRL. Okay so I will go into detail on each but if you're new and you've never flown before I think get DRL and if you're a little bit experienced or you want something to practice with, I would get liftoff. To go into a little bit more detail then, I'll start with Velocidrone because I don't rate it. I can't I can't find anything that makes me say, yeah, that's why this is better than liftoff. Um, and I know everybody on YouTube seems to really like it and that's why I bought it because I thought, well, if everyone's using it and saying it's really good, it must be much better. 
but it doesn't feel much better and it sort of like doesn't really bring anything that liftoff doesn't have so i don't really know why people are into it maybe people can tell me why everyone likes it so much maybe i'm missing something major liftoff then and i think this one is the clear choice if you just want purely for flight feel and for accuracy this is going to beat uh, drl and look a lot better and sort of function smoother than Velocity drone. The downside is it's got a sort of a clunky feel to it where um, the menus are a little bit like there's many loading screens that seem to not really need to be there. Like to get into the game, you have to load. Obviously, you load the game, that's fine. Then you choose a map, which was a loading screen. Then you choose a drone, which is a loading screen. And then you load into the game, which is obviously another loading screen. So there's like three loading screens. And then also, if you just want to open the game and configure your controller, there's a loading screen between that as well. So it's like there's extra load screens that don't really need to be there that none of the other ones have. No other game I've had has had like a controller set up load screen. Like, seems really weird. But other than that, it is a good solid feel and it looks nice. And um, it is, I used it for the longest time I only used Liftoff because um, I got kind of sick of the way that DRL functions in terms of flight feel after flying a lot of my own stuff and wanting it to feel more similar. So yeah, if you're um, reasonably experienced and you don't really want a sim to learn, Exactly, then liftoff is probably the one, I would say. Then the last one will be DRL, which I think is clearly the one you want if you're just learning you've never flown before because there's a mode in it that lets you learn through these challenges that it sets and there's like a trainer character guy that like says, this is how it all works, this is what you need to be doing and like teaches you how it all works and, and goes together. And as you get through, progress through the challenges, the flight mode of the drone increases in closeness to the real thing and then eventually it's like full manual at the end on the last sort of set of challenges and that sort of progression thing really helps with with learning to fly i think a lot um so for that reason and also it just looks so much nicer and it's so much more polished than the other two like it actually feels like a finished product unlike the other two kind of feel a bit sort of beta you can completely do everything well from the pause menu like you just pause the game and you can completely swap your drone configure it change the motors swap the propellers and then go back into the game and load that drone in straight away and it's like there's no going back to a load screen to get your drone swapped you can drop down and switch you can switch map instantly everything is do doable in the smoothest way possible and it's just so much nicer to use it's just a shame that the flight feel isn't as maybe there is a way you can configure your drone because you can change everything about the physics from the pause menu which is insane as well so there's po it's possible you can configure it to fly very similar to liftoff i just haven't figured out how to do it Okay, uh, thanks for watching and make sure you press a button. It's always good to press them if you see them because you don't know what they're going to do until you press them. So just try it, you never know. Give it a crack.